Hello, and welcome to my channel. My name is Jonathan Cohn, and today I will be ranking my favorite James Luceno Star Wars novels. If you've been watching my channel, you'll have seen I've been doing a video series recently ranking my favorite Star Wars uh, novelists and their books. I did a video on uh, Timothy Zahn and a video on Claudia Gray and a video on John Jackson Miller. And so today I'm doing a video on James Luceno. He has written to date 10 Star Wars novels. And from what it looks like, from what I've read online, he's he's tapped out. He will not be writing anymore. It's been quite a few years since he wrote his last novel. Uh, it was quite a good book to go out on, although I'll say. And so today I'll be ranking all of the books that I've read of his. I must preface this by saying he does have one book that I have not read yet that is called Millennium Falcon, and I intend to read that book uh, soon, eventually. I just haven't gotten to it yet, but it is a book I have my eyes on, and I've, I've heard good things about it. I believe I started reading it back about 10, 12 years ago, around the time that it came out, and I just... I wasn't into reading yet, so I just was at the library and I saw, ooh, the Millennium Falcon. Uh, didn't get into it yet, but I will one day. Uh, and so I will talk about my favorite books of his. And so one of his books is actually a duology, so I'll be doing that as like one book. So I only will be ranking his top eight books instead of his top 10 or top nine. So without further ado, let's start with number eight. And this is kind of a mediocre book, and that is Tarkin. This is a book that I disliked when I first read it, and it has actually grown on me substantially in the last, in my most recent reread. This is a book that, uh, this was the second book in the, the canon, James Lucino's first. It came out in November 2014, and there was all this hubbub of about, oh, how is the canon going to connect into the movies, or rather not connect in the movies and all this stuff. And it was really curious why they gave a book to Tarkin instead. And really, it's a Tarkin Vader book, um, but, but it is also a Tarkin book. And the problem with this book is it lacks the Star Wars magic. It lacks the energy, the excitement, the enthusiasm that Star Wars books have. The biggest problem with this book is the way that it tells a Star Wars story, but it feels like he's going through the motions of it. You know, you have Tarkin, and he has his ship, the Carrion Spike, and someone steals his ship. It's his personal, uh, not yacht, but it's his personal ship, and so he has to go after it, and Vader is along for the ride, and it just, it lacks a lot of substance. What this book makes up for, though, is the revelations about the Empire. You learn so much about the way the Empire is building different things, the way that they're growing, the way that they're transforming Coruscant. Coruscant gets a lot of attention in this book. The way that the Jedi Temple is used. We get to see the Jedi Temple in this book. Though That information was really intriguing, but it's not fun to read. The first chapter is mostly about Tarkin's methodology of why he chooses his clothes. And it gets made fun of a lot, but that's because it truly is a horrendous first chapter. And so it turns a lot of people off. And I get it. And it's the reason why it's a we the we his weakest book. But the way that the, the revelations make up for it in my mind. So I think this is a very mediocre book overall. And so that's why this is my number eight. But he, he gets much better from here on out. My number seven is Labyrinth of Evil. And this might get me in trouble for having it so low because I know so many people in Facebook groups that I've talked with who have this as one of their um, or favorite James Lucino books. And I thought that this book was good, but it wasn't great. This book basically tells the immediate story in the prequel before uh, the events of uh, Revenge of the Sith. And so there's Obi-Wan and Anakin get plenty of time in this. Uh, there are other characters like Sidious gets quite a bit of screen time in, or page time in this. Um, and this book, while the story is interesting, it tells a very Clone Wars story and it basically shows the in the Legends version of how uh, Coruscant is invaded. It tells that kind of interesting story, but I don't think it's 
that exciting as a whole. I think that the, the, the climax of this book is pretty weak. This book basically tells a, di- a, a different version of events that we see in the 2D Clone Wars, and I love the 2D Clone Wars. I think that uh, the 2D Clone Wars absolutely nail the tone of, of the, the, the Battle of Coruscant, and this book really doesn't. And so there were a lot of things where I was like, this is good, but it could be better. And it has been better in other stories. And so that's why I, I rank it so low. So that's why this is my number seven. So my number six is going to be interesting because it is actually two books in one. I'm going to be talking about the Agents of Chaos duology. And they're called Heroes Trial and Jedi Eclipse. And those are uh, two books, part of the overall New Jedi Order series. They're still pretty early on in the New Jedi Order. And those are two books which are very Han-centric books. All the rest of the characters are present, but Han takes the lead in these two books. And they were good, but so much of the other New Jedi Order books, including one of Jim Lucino's other books, just were done so much better. And this book, it has, the, particularly, I think the first book is better than the second, but the first book has this really interesting um, ambassador character who uh, has her pet who is involved, and the two of them are basically working with the, the New Republic on trying to figure out how to deal with this whole um, uh, threat that is happening uh, with the Yuzhan Vong. But this ambassador has some information that is kind of important that she doesn't disclose to them. And so there, that's, that's part of the story. And there's also the greater New Jedi Order of the training of the Jedi and all that stuff that's happening that's also really, really good. Um, I think that this is a better plot and better action in these two books than in the other ones that I mentioned or lower on my list. But they just don't stack up compared to the other New Jedi Order books. They're definitely towards the bottom. They're not at the very bottom. That's reserved for another book in the New Jedi Order. But they're towards the bottom for me, unfortunately. My number five, I'm getting into books I do have, is another New Jedi Order book. This is The Unifying Force. This is a massive step up from the other books that I talked about for him. This is a great book. This book, the visuals, the visual storytelling in this book is unparalleled. There is something that happens in this book regarding a planet that it happens and then everyone looks up. And I was like, that is so vivid and real and so well, well, well told. And the whole way that this wraps up the whole New Jedi Order and it gives it a nice bow and it ties up all the little storylines. It's a bit of a longer book for Star Wars, but it is worth it. You feel, yeah, Jedi, go. This is wonderful. You feel excited reading this book. It feels, it was a very satisfying conclusion. I'm very glad that I was able to read this. And so I highly recommend this one as my number five James Lucino book. Getting into uh, my top four, my number four is one that I think most other people will have lower, but I think is really good, and that is Dark Lord, The Rise of Darth Vader. This is a book that is a very paint-by-numbers legends book, in that it follows a lot of the tropes and a lot of the deeds that the legends books do, but it is so, so good in in the entertainment value that it provides. Of course, Darth Vader is a very present part of this book. If you liked his appearance in Rogue One or are excited about his appearance in the new Kenobi series, I think that this might be exciting. It won't tie into those, but it'll get you excited about Vader again. This book shows a lot about the pain that he's going through in the new suit, how difficult it is for him to wield the Force, things like that. You also see... Uh, Darth Vader's, you know, his his rage in this book. This book has a small cast of Jedi and clones and other characters, which are just kind of, you would expect, oh, that's totally going to happen. You know exactly how their story is going to go. But it's so much fun to read, and the settings in this book are just so much fun. But there is one scene on uh, Alderaan, which I thought was brilliantly thought out. The way that, basically, Vader shows up and he basically scares the Organas. And you see the palpable fear that Bail Organa has. And 
I loved reading that scene. I thought it was hilarious. And I was like, I know why he's worried. I know why he's scared right now. And oh, it was this, this that that scene was made the whole book worth it for me. Uh, so it's a very entertaining book. This is a book where you may not love it, but you'll definitely like it. It's, it's just it's just a fun popcorn book, I, in my opinion. Next, we get into his top three, which I just think are pure Star Wars literature. This is why James Lucino is in the upper echelons of Star Wars authors. These books are why he got so many opportunities. My number three James Lucino book is Darth Plagueis. This is most people's number one, and I love it. I just love the other ones more. What makes this book so good is the exploration of the dark side. I don't like reading about uh, the dark side usually, but it was so intriguing and gross and horrifying what he does with the dark side in this book. And so I enjoyed reading that. You have Darth Plagueis is involved. You also have his master at the beginning, Darth Tenebris is involved. You also have Palpatine takes a very present part in this book. And I was very surprised that we got as much Palpatine as we did. There's also a lot of build up into the Phantom Menace and the prequels and even some overlap with the prequels that was exciting. And if you look at the back of the book, yes, Darth Maul even shows up. It's a very exciting book. There's a lot of great uh, just scenes and where this, the dialogue is so impressive and the exploration of the dark side is just so deep. It's the only parallel for this, I would say, is the Darth Bane trilogy does well with the dark side, but this is, this is the other book that is super good at telling the dark side. So that's why this is my number three. My number two is actually, when I look back, I say a lot of books were my first Star Wars books, but this one, is, I can legitimately fully say was my first Star Wars book because I went back and thought about it. And this is Cloak of Deception. And I think I have a little bit of rose-colored glasses with this book. And I feel like if I reread it, I would rank it lower. So I don't want to reread it because I love thinking about this book. The way that Labyrinth of Evil was a setup to Revenge of the Sith, this book, Cloak of Deception, is a setup to Phantom Menace. I know that Revenge of the Sith is a better movie than Phantom Menace, but I have always loved Phantom Menace. I've always enjoyed it. It's the one that if you said, you want to turn on a prequel, I'll be like, Phantom Menace, let's go. No questions asked. I will always turn on Phantom Menace. I love it. And this book... If you love Phantom Menace, you're going to love this book because it's got all the action that Phantom Menace had. It's got the politics. There were certain scenes where basically he was like, how can I make this book as close to the Phantom Menace as I possibly can? And James Lucino writes politics really well. There are only a few Star Wars authors who can nail the politics. I'd say that Timothy Zahn can and uh, Claudia Gray can. And the third one is definitely James Lucino. The way he nails the politics of Valorum, who is a very underrated character, character, and Palpatine is very good. The way that he talks about Obi-Wan and Qui-Gon's relationship is good. The way that he makes it feel like just a fun adventure, this is a very fun adventure. The way that he ties in things and sets up the whole Trade Federation. If you want to understand why is it so important that the Trade Federation blockade is happening, this book explains it. Even though it's Legends, it's still a wonderful book to read. And so... I just have such fond memories reading this book. And this is the book that made me think, oh, there are Star Wars books out there? Oh, yes. And so I love this one. Now to get to my number one. If you've been paying attention, you probably have figured it out. And my number one James Lucino book is Catalyst. He His his worst book was his, can, was his other canon book, but his best book is his other canon book. And this is... Oh, this is how you do tie-in fiction. This book connects Rogue One so well. I, he, he does prequel books. That's what he does. He writes a book that sets up a movie. And what this book does is it explains Galen Erso and Orson Krennic's relationship. You should know going into this book, there is no action. There's well, almost no action in this entire book. It is a very slow book, much like Tarkin, but it works better than Tarkin because of the character development, and because of the suspense. There is a great level of suspense in this book in that you know that Galen Erso should not be working with the Empire, and he knows it, 
but he slowly gets sucked into working with the Empire. And Lyra Urso is wonderful in this book. And I had the privilege of getting to read this book when it first came out in November of 2016, before Rogue One came out. And I had such an appreciation for the characters before they even were on screen. And I know that James Lucino was given uh, the actual script to Rogue One when he wrote the book. And obviously the end of Rogue One was changed, but the first part of it was kept the same. And he based it off of that. And he did such a good job of making me appreciate Galen Urso, uh, Orson Krennic, and Jin Urso. And so there, and there are other plenty of connections. All of uh, James Lucino's books have Easter eggs and references. None more so than Catalyst. Catalyst is the mother of all Easter eggs and references in Star Wars books. I absolutely loved everything about this book. I've reread it many times. I've listened to the audiobook, which was done by Jonathan Davis, which was also excellently done. And I just, I, I just think about the events of this book and how the Death Star was designed and built, and why the Empire made the decisions, and how he connects this book. He, in this book specifically, the Death Star construction is meant to be an allegory for the Manhattan Project. And while I disagree with the uh, the themes in this book, the way they're written is so well done. And so this is my number one James Lucino book. So if you've read James Lucino Star Wars books, let me know which are your favorites, which are your least favorites. If you can rank them, please rank them down below in the comments section. Please subscribe to my channel. I have lots of Star Wars content coming and lots of Star Wars content that's already come out. But until next time, I'm Jonathan, and thank you for watching.